beauty of phenomenology is that it meets people where they're at and then leads them you know, to somewhere maybe they've never been before, somewhere new, uh, because it always appeals to common human experience. And with this appeal to human experience, many people are, are most convinced about an experience like love, for example. And uh, classic um, structures of philosophy, something like metaphysics, uh, don't quite have uh, the aptitude to deal with the experience of love, for example. And that's where the work of someone like Jean-Luc Marion really becomes important. Because if we want to tie our common experiences of love to the revelation of God testified to in Christ, there's a bridge to be made there. And phenomenology is that approach that's able to meet people where they're at and then take them to uh, face to face with this revelation uh, in Christ and decide if this is uh, the greatest revelation of love on the face of the earth. Um, so in this way, I like to talk about phenomenology comes through the back door toward the house of truth, whereas metaphysics is the front door. Both are essential um, to approaching truth, but uh, phenomenology is something that can kind of catch us uh, by surprise and lead us to further surprise. I like to say that the only expectation when doing phenomenology is to be surprised. And that's a beautiful thing um, because it prevents us from becoming closed off to experiences like love and joy, faith and hope, uh, and, and the whole range of human experience Phenomenology is a method which generously embraces it all and finds meaning in it all. When uh, uh, biology or uh, other positivist sciences try to bracket uh, emotion, feeling, sensation, and so on, so far so good, I have nothing against that. But by definition, what is the bracket? Become irrational and out of the grasp. And uh, in the erotic phenomenon, we are driven precisely by, by what the bracket. They tell us that we are, we are driven by uh, uh, chemical operations. Possibly, but in fact, we don't pay attention to the chemical connections which we don't know, and they don't know whether, how far they uh, drive us. But we are very well aware by what and by whom we are driven. That is, by emotions, by desire, and so on. So you can, you can indeed keep in your uh, grasp what can become an object. That's, uh, that's, uh, it's very common, there is no point. But all the rest become out of, is out of, remains out of your grasp and is by necessity irrational. Where is the erotic phenomenon uh, made rational, understandable? In literature. If you want to, to know what is jealousy, what is uh, lust, what is uh, fidelity, pleasure, love, uh, read Shakespeare, read Proust. It is explained very well. Le read Stadal. It is by reading that, because those guys knew a lot about that, they were able to uh, explain it back in their novels. They were able to, they are able to teach us how to behave. It's why a teenager should, it should be compulsory for a teenager to read Shakespeare and Proust just not to make uh, uh, big mistakes when they fall in love for the first time. <laughs> just have to, to, to be aware. So it is ridiculous. Uh, that objection is, is just pointless. It is pitiful. And so uh, uh, the, the real problem is, is, so indeed in literature, you have no conceptual analysis of the logic of love. So that is up to philosopher to build up a conceptual analysis of love. Yeah, with phenomenology, uh, some people are suspicious 
of those who would include theological uh, topics, themes, phenomena within their phenomenology because they would prefer to bracket the question of, of God, especially some specific uh, proposal of divine revelation as uh, kind of contaminating the neutral philosophical pursuit. However, what happens there is that kind of effect where the baby might be thrown out with the, the bathwater, the kernel thrown out with the husk. And I think to do good phenomenology, you have to leave open the possibility of God showing up on the scene somewhere, somehow, and, and not be closed off to that. Uh, so for those who leave that question open, phenomenology is quite helpful because we resist uh, this kind of temptation to um, reduce God to some conceptual idol or a host of concepts like, like being, like God the cause of God's self, like God uh, the uncaused cause, the unmoved mover, pure actualities, classic metaphysic. Uh, metaphysical definitions of God, phenomenology tries to clear new space for new uh, conceptions, new encounters, new experiences of God that aren't locked in uh, to such what could be rather uh, stale and, and dry and impersonal uh, kind of conceptions of God. Uh, but if we want to pursue the personal revelation of a personal God, uh, we must describe experience in full as persons, uh, encountering persons, even divine persons. I wrote The Erotic Phenomenon because I was very much surprised, and to tell you, deeply disappointed, that philosophy had said so little about The Erotic Phenomenon, considering that it was only uh, an irrational passion, a disease, uh, or nothing. In fact, it is very, very rational in its way. And the way according to which the, the erotic phenomenon appears rational is a way which contradicts the classical understanding of reason. For instance, in love there is no more any use of the principle of identity. It's always about, uh, if not losing your identity to yourself, at least to let your identity be questioned by the other. You are not what you are. You are what the, the other will make out of you. Or, for instance, you, you bracket, you, you disconnect the principle of sufficient reason. Because in love, not only you don't always uh, behave according to a good reason you know clearly, that is, you don't know why you are in love. <laughs> and, but suddenly you may understand that there is no why. No, not that the, you don't know a reason which should creep uh, behind um, or below and you are not aware yet. But precisely you love because you have given up the idea that you need a reason to love. Because in love precisely you make the choice to love without reason. And it is why it makes a huge difference. You, you get into a new world where we have no previous reason to love someone. If you have good reason to love, to pay attention to someone, to be committed to someone, it is not love. It is a deal, it is an economical exchange, it is a contract, and all those things are very rational and have nothing against that. So you have reasons to do that. And the other is aware that you do that for good reasons. And he may agree, so you make a deal, you, you have a contract. So it's like business. And this is not bad, but it is not love. He, love starts when you act being free from accounting for a reason. So God loves men although they are sinners, 
And it is not very reasonable to do that. And you love someone without reasons, and it is a great thing. So the erotic phenomenon has rules, rational rules, but not the same rules than when you buy a car, uh, initiate a, uh, a business, or make a deal uh, in the office of an attorney. <laughs>